What is going on guys? Dr. D here from One Hive Invicta bringing you the Week 8 CWL Rising War Recap where One Hive Invicta faced off against one of our divisional rivals, Bangladesh. Here is a screenshot of their uh, clan, a bunch of uh, really solid guys over there. There's a ton of Bangladesh clans, so I thought I would throw this up there so you guys can find them if you want to go and check them out. Uh, anyway, they really did uh, give us a run for our money. Um, let's go ahead and look at why this week was so important for us. It's because of the CWL standings. And if we have a look here, you can see that that is what's really important. Uh, One Hive Invicta has moved into the top spot in the Bomb Tower Division. Um, this is extremely important. Uh, it was, or it was an extremely important week because a loss by um, Aussie Addicts to Reddit Ace, uh, who is also a divisional uh, rival, uh, moved us into the top spot. We have two more weeks before the end of the second season, or three more weeks, I'm sorry, um, but two weeks uh, until we then get to face Aussie Addicts in the final uh, week of CWL. So assuming that both of us win out, we have got a real showdown for the top spot in uh, the Bomb Tower Division. Okay, let's hop over and have a look at this uh, war. Oh. There are the basic war statistics. You can see 94.93% uh, to 93.90%, a very close war, 1% difference in total destruction. Uh, we had uh, three more triples uh, than Bangladesh did. They had a couple of very high two stars on um, some of our 10s and 11s. Um, we were able to get two uh, 10v10 triples. Uh, they did not get any 10v10 triples, and then they had a failed dip, and that really wound up being the, the difference in this one. Uh, props to these guys, though. Uh, it was a fun war, as as are all CWL wars. Um, kept us guessing right up to the end, uh, wondering what was going to happen. But uh, we have a look here. You can see they were able to uh, two-star all three of our 11s. Um, a couple of our 10s were tripled. Uh, all of those triples came by uh, Town Hall 11s. Um, as we scroll through here, uh, we can see that uh, Frank, who is is Yo-Yo, uh, got himself a six-pack. Um, Wolverine, who you guys know as Maxwell, who does uh, the CWL recaps, got a six-pack, a fresh six-pack. Um, uh, you sent this is this is Matt. Uh, he's one of our war generals um, right here. Uh, that's his town hall nine, and he was able to get not not just a six pack. I mean, so he gets a six pack up here on town hall tens, um, and then a six pack uh, down here with uh, his high use and account. So uh, of eighty six stars, Matt accounted for twelve of those. Um, as well as having six defenses. So definitely um, the, the, the war hero goes there. Uh, as we keep moving down, lots of guys with at least one triple. Uh, TT had himself a six-pack. We're going to watch one of his attacks. Um, Anacondas, Mitch, Pettis. We're going to watch Pettis' attack on 16. And that is it. Uh when we hop over here, um, you can see that uh, we, of course, left these three Town Hall 11s. They were all two-starred, at least, and that's that's kind of the goal, is to get two stars on Town Hall 11s. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you follow um, the Invite League, and especially War Whales, you will see just some amazing 11 v 11 triples over there. Uh, Megan Mo Money, who I, I remember when I first started this game many years ago, watching videos of of her. Uh, is she she's now on War Whales, and I think last war she had um, 11 v 11 six packs. So definitely go and check those out. Pretty pretty amazing stuff. Um, also, I'm gonna throw this out here right now. Uh, by Forever just had a uh, Town Hall 9 uh, triple a Town Hall 10 using a Quad Lalo in, in this this weekend. So if you're if you're not subscribed to the By Forever chat or the By Forever YouTube channel, you're gonna want to check that out. In that same war, within 10 minutes, 
a different Town Hall 9 got a 60% two-star on a Town Hall 11. Just unreal. So you'll want to check those out. Um, anyway, uh, eight here, 83% uh, by Fat Joe. Fat Joe um, had a Town Hall 10 triple, um, and so did... Who was it? I don't remember. We're going to watch both of those Town Hall 10 triples. Uh, Fat, there's Fat Joe's and Texas Hammer. So we'll check both of those out. Um, Warble, a, a monster attack here, 60% two star. So it was a really, you know, Town Hall, Town Hall 10 V11s, they don't get the credit they deserve. <laughs> they, they catch a lot of flack when they don't get two stars. Um, but uh, I'll tell you what, getting two stars on a Town Hall 11 as a Town Hall 10 is no easy task, and Warble is one of our most consistent guys. Just some really, really well thought out plans that he pulls together. So, all right, let's let's scroll down here a bit and let's watch Fat Joe's attack on this Town Hall 10. So you can see it is a bowler witch attack, uh, 18 bowlers, uh, six witches. He's got CC of bowlers as well, and then two golems. So it starts by uh, throwing some witches out there to set that funnel on the right side. Uh, one golem and just a few bowlers to set funnels on the left side um, and, and the right side. And as these bowlers stand back and do some damage using using that bounce um, they wind up setting a very nice funnel drops a jump spell golems start moving over uh, remember he has got there we go a cc of bowlers with a giant as well as uh, he had six more bowlers uh, dropped three of those bowlers with his max bowlers in the cc um, witches are going in skellies are going in and this is a great base because two jumps gets you access to basically the entire base. Heal comes down and bowlers are just wrecking here. Both uh, Teslas are down at this point. Expo is down. Um, of course, uh, he's, he's used his Queen's ability, used his King's ability, but really there is not much left. One, two, three, four point defenses. Uh, still has that CC up. And this poor witch over here not doing a whole lot. Um, but yeah, this this is basically done. Now we've got two point defenses, a splash defense, which isn't going to do anything. And this, at least this uh, hound, this CC hound is, is kind of useless. Uh, there we go. Down goes that uh, CC loon that <laughs> lasted forever there. Um, drops the skellies there, and they're going to wind up taking out this... Um, th this uh, Tesla tower, and that is it. Uh, you can see it's mostly clean up at this point. Um, has some bowlers beating through the walls. Are going to wind up taking out these this last defense. These buildings get cleaned up here by these remaining skellies, and that will be it. There we go. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Fat Joe. All right, let's move on and check out Texas Hammer. Fat Joe and Texas Hammer are are almost good for for one ten v ten triple per war. It's really they they've been really really consistent. Um, okay, so uh, Fat Joe starts out, or I mean Texas Hammer starts out just uh, trying to get this uh, elixir storage knocked down a little bit. He's got a queen walk here that he's going to use to set a funnel. We'll speed it up just a little bit while this queen walk is occurring. Gonna get the CC pulled out here. Oh, I thought he did. My bad. <laughs> okay. So, queen is moving around. So that minion is, is about to get that whole thing finally taken out by himself. There we go. And as the queen moves around... Um, in here, here comes a whole slew of wall breakers, and let's slow this down just a little bit, and those mass bowlers come pouring in right into the core, and if you can get a bunch of bowlers in the core, drop a heal on them right when they get to the center, get your last rage, and the nice thing here is this, th this is actually a really poor placement for this uh, Inferno Tower, and it's because... 
when it's only one space away from the wall, which it was there, those bowlers will, will eat that alive. Uh, so bowlers have pushed all the way through. You've got one point defense left. It goes down. That is it. Uh, some air skellies. Who cares about them? Um, the... Uh, Healer is still up on that huge group of bowlers, which is fantastic. And that is it. It is Tree Stars in the bag. Nice job, Texas Hammer. All right. Uh, let's move on and let's check out some of the uh, Town Hall 9 attacks. TT, we wanted to watch one of his. Was this the one? This is the one. All right. So we've got a Zapquake. Quad Lalo coming here. And so takes out the AD that is kind of uh, in the middle there, close to the queen. And king and queen come down. Um, easy funnel here to work your way up to get to that enemy queen. That's exactly what's going to happen here. Poison goes down on the enemy queen. Uh, king goes up, pops the ability. Uh, after his queen finishes, uh, he does wind up popping his queen's ability only to pull those archers over a little bit and get them. Oh no. There we go. Baby dragon comes in. Uh, remember his queen ability is gone at this point and down goes his queen, uh, baby dragon and a few minions help clean up that CC enemy queen is still up, which is a little scary here. Um, here we go. Haste. Now, fortunately, Queen is standing right next to uh, a defense, and those loons take her out. That was such fortunate luck right there. Um, but uh, doing a great job here. Um, the, the pathing is, is very, very nice, actually, uh, right through here for a Lalo. Um, there we go. Uh, has a rage down. It's unfortunate that this group of loons heads over to that expo first, but they get that expo taken out, uh, pops the uh, second to the last uh, lava hound there, and just a swarm of loons heading towards that last air defense. Does not pop that, that uh, lava hound, but I think it actually pops right here at the end, if I remember right. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'm crazy. No, it doesn't. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So that is it. Uh, it is tree stars in the bag. Nice job, TT. Uh, and, and props on the six pack, buddy. All right. Moving right along. Anacondas. Anacondas is new. He was a, a swarmy who uh, he was. He was an elder in swarm, and he wound up coming up here. Um, just a beast with these hogs. So uh, gets. A loon down for a uh, one for one swap and takes out that um, mortar and starts setting his funnel here. Got a Tesla that winds up popping. This is a fresh hit, by the way. Um, there we go. So all of those golems, or both of those golems, I should say. And uh, I, a lot of times we see the, uh, the heavy kill squad golems. This is a nice uh, situation here with this queen chamber. He's able to get a lot of value there. Queen, cha or queen and, the, um, and an expo at the same time. Um, sends in a giant over here uh, to start doing some kind of surgical hog deployments or at least to tank a little bit for those hogs. Um, queen is over here taking care of the CC... Uh, the pups that were left in the CC. This actually works out beautifully here because there we go. Those um, bowlers wind up taking out all but one of those skellies. Uh, hogs are coming in. Um, a few more skellies, but he's just working his hogs around. And after this, oof, that was a little bit brutal, um, but still has some hogs in the bag. Only one point defense left up, and it is gone. Going to take out that mortar. Queen starts picking off those skellies. Gets all of the skellies taken care of so the hogs don't have to worry about it. And that is it. It is tree stars in the bag. Nothing but clean up. Swag queen ability. Great job, anacondas. Very nice. 
few things more fun to watch than a good hog attack. All right, next. Murph, we might come back to that one. Um, Bella, so I wanted to show this because this is the new, the new and improved, I'm gonna hit pause here real quick, the new and improved Witch Slap, which does not include any type of healers. Uh, instead, it is double, go excuse me, double golems. So you're bringing in two golems, uh, two jumps. Now this is actually kind of a, a tricky compartment here. Um, these, these big compartments like this, uh, bowlers tend to knock out uh, a, a, a queen platform easy, and it makes for um, a, a potential split here. But you keep all of those witches together, and you just lay them down across the background. And it's very much like the old school Go Wee Wee. Not quite the same, obviously, because the old school Go Wee Wee had more than two golems with it and a lot more than ten wizards, which is actually what she started with to set the funnel here. Um, but everything is moving in. It's moving in very nicely. Bowlers well, still have a couple. Yeah, he's got, she, she's got all of her bowlers up, all but one maybe. Um... It depends on what you like. Some people go with a heal spell here. Some people go with a, uh, a, a second rage spell here. Heal spell worked out very nicely. Um, and, and Bella's just pushing through. Um, we're getting down to <laughs> where there is not a whole lot left. Point defense here, point defense here, point defense here. Has not used her queen's ability yet. And in fact, in every one of these, just like in the old school witch slap, queen's ability uh, usually is there still at the at the back end of the base. Um, she just doesn't take any damage with, with so much tank and so many skellies to distract troops. And that is it. It is tree stars in the bag. Very nice job, Bella. Okay. Pettis. This is another guy that recently came up from uh, Swarm, and he's coming with a Queen Walk Lalo. We've had a few guys just come up from Swarm, um, and and have have either either subbed or gotten added to our um, our final rosters uh, for CWL. Uh, comes in with a King and a Baby Dragon down here to take care of the Royals. And, and a wizard pops the king's ability king is enemy king is dead but so is his king doesn't matter uh baby dragon and the barbs take that out uh gets the cc lure here um which is in that poison which is always important to try and keep her in that poison as much as possible so that she's not continuing to spawn skellies and screw your queen walk up um drops a second rage there maybe a bit early on that second rage but uh, it wound up working for him. Um, I actually think he would have been fine not dropping that second rage, and he probably could have worked his way all the way around here and never used a rage, um, but, or, or maybe not used it until about right here, uh, especially when these healers decide that they're going to switch up and start focusing on that. But in comes his, his uh, hounds, um, both moving towards that second AD, and... It is hastes and heals as they move towards this area where they're going to take a lot of damage, um, either from Expo or from uh, these Wizard Towers. Um, that Loon is not going to take out that that uh, Expo, unfortunately. Um, these ones will, and he's got both of his Hounds up still. These <laughs> these blowers are uh, uh, they're they're kind of a pain, but. Uh, unfortunately, all out of spells too. But smart move. He's got a bunch. He's starting to get his cleanup down right off the bat. Uh, Queen is going to start pushing in here a little bit. Um, but yeah, that uh, that that blower or that that air sweeper is just a huge pain right now. Fortunately, his hound is really serving as a great tank, and fortunately, his hound splits off to that uh, wizard tower while the loons don't. Uh, just a couple of defenses left. Everything moves over towards this last uh, expo. Queen is still working her way around, just doing fantastic. Uh, this is what I meant by not using that, um, that, that rage earlier, though. He could have used it up here and saved himself a, a, a ton of headache trying to push through that air sweeper. Doesn't matter, though. Uh, plenty of pups up. 
Lots of loons up, and this base is GG. Nice job, Pettis. And I'll throw this out there, too. I saw Pettis do one of the coolest attacks that I've ever seen when he was in... Um, when, when he was in Swarm, it was this really awesome uh, dragon attack. All right, so Papa Smurf coming with a Queen Walk um, Goho. And speed this up just a little bit here to start. So Queen is setting uh, a funnel here for the uh, healer portion, on this side at least. Sends in a hog, trying to get that lure, can't quite get it. Um, but has his funnel set over here. I'm going to slow this down. So, uh, funnel is now set. Throws down a single jump. Qu King is going to come down. Remember, still has not gotten the CC pull. There it comes. This is not what you want to see, right? Um, but, that baby dragon is fortunately under a max poison. Is going to sit under that poison for a while. Um, going to get a rage down here. There we go. Has some wizards that help to take out that baby dragon. And at this point, I mean, he's got 13 hogs. He has not even dropped yet. And one, two, just a few point defenses. These up here are, are, are perhaps the biggest concern. Uh, Queen is going to eventually get through here. Um, but all of his bowlers are up. Hogs go straight there, and he knows he's going to have to use a heal there. Uh, drops that heal at this point. Uh, Queen takes out the expo, and the uh, this the single um, archer tower is all is focused on these golems, and it is seven swag hogs. Uh, there he throws down four of them, but it the, that is it. It is GG. Very nice job. Uh, th three swag hogs. Swag queen's ability. Just a great attack. Very well thought out. Um, Nice job, Smurf. And Papa Smurf, newest elder in One Hive Invicta. So props on that, man. Um, okay. Being wiser. Uh, Ibernicus. So, what do we got here? We have an old school, uh, or at least a quasi-old school, Govaho. Uh, start setting a funnel. This is... Of course, cold-blooded, coming in with a single golem. Um, in with the Valks. Going to take out this queen and ideally get to these uh, expos. It's actually uh, a very, very good attack when you've got a situation where you can get a queen and both expos with a, a limited kill squad. That means, you know, roughly uh, doesn't quite get that expo, but... But almost one whack of a, of a hammer and that thing is gone. There we go. Has an expo on ground here. You know, these guys actually had a couple of bases with expos on ground. Um, man, uh, <laughs> that just seems like a recipe for disaster to me. But, I mean, whatever. Uh, air right now is so OP that um, having an expo down is, is a scary situation. Very nice use of poison there. Uh, winds up slowing down that king and taking out that uh, th those um, remaining uh, pups. And, of course, wouldn't you know it, uh, right where he drops his, his hogs, he winds up having a bunch of skelly traps and a giant bomb. Doesn't matter. Lots of hogs left. Uh, gonna, gonna take out um, one skellies. Now they're gonna take off after that king. Oh, maybe they don't. I thought they did. Uh, at any rate, it is clean up now. Uh, it is tree stars in the bag. Very, very nice job, Hibernicus. And welcome to Invicta and welcome to the CWL. There we go. <laughs> nice job. All right. Uh, another Frank because he got a six pack. TT got a six pack. Wolverine got a six pack. Uh, Matt, as I said, had a six-pack right there, and Hernando. We're going to watch this uh, last attack by Hernando. Okay, so you can see we've got a uh, stoned hobo here. That's the double jump, um, the attack that I like to call the Cheatham. 
Um, so, ten wizards. It's not uncommon for to, to bring uh, ten or, or sometimes even twelve wizards for one of these stoned hobos. Um, you really want to have a great funnel. Um, and I say this all the time, and and it's it's especially true when you're bringing... Uh, man, that's scary bringing in those uh, wall breakers like that uh, with, a, with a whiz tower right there. But, yeah, no, did not quite make it in. Um, so King is going to wind up punching through here and there they go. Got the hole. And that's why you need a wide funnel because without that, everything would have been walking and it would have been just a disaster. He gets him in there, drops a rage spell. Um, one expo is gone. Second expo is about to be gone. Queen is now dead. And just starts throwing some hogs in on either distracted defenses or defenses that don't care if there's a hog right next to him anyway. Um, and as other defenses become distracted, you trickle in more hogs. Uh, wouldn't have hurt to save a few hogs to throw in right here when this is distracted, but uh, it doesn't matter anyway. Um, that is it. Has a loon that he was waiting until this uh, Tesla became distracted, drops that loon. There we go. It is tree stars in the bag. Does not worry about this uh, CC in the ha or hound in the CC, and still has plenty of troops for cleanup. King is dead now, and that is it. It is tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Hernando. And that is it. So again, here are the final war statistics. Uh, props to Bangladesh, and as, as I said at the beginning, uh, this moves One Hive of Invicta into um, first place in the Bomb Tower division, though uh, that, that placing, the ranking that you see on War Match is actually based on, on uh, percent, and we have a slightly higher percent than Aussie Addicts. We have the, the same, um, the same uh, win to loss ratio, but... Um, they, they do hold the tiebreaker over us, I believe, because we lost to them. That, that was one of our three losses. Uh, so we're both 5-3 and three at this point. Uh, we have a 5-0 and oh record in our division outside of that. So I don't know. Uh, at any rate, um, a great war to Bangladesh. Uh, best of luck, guys. Um, I know probably not the outcome you wanted to, to have here because, uh, to be honest, Bangladesh, in, Invicta, and um, Aussie Addicts are all kind of scraping for that, that, that top spot in our division. But All right, uh, that's it from me. This is Dr. D from One Hive Invicta saying clash on.